Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessa, and I'm so happy you're here for this episode of Better Sex. I've dedicated my professional life to helping couples enjoy a fulfilling, intimate life. I believe that sex is important. Our connections to other people matter, and we're not living our life to the fullest if we aren't connecting emotionally and sexually with our partner. That's why I'm here, bringing ideas and information to help you live and love better. I'm excited for today's topic. We're going to be talking about both masculine and feminine energy. And I'm talking about this because it's relevant to sex and to our lives. So we all have masculine and feminine energy. It's not about whether you're male or female bodied. It doesn't matter what kind of physical form you're in. We all have both types of energy. And it's important to be able to access and develop our sense of each of those types of energy in our lives. And it's especially important in sex because it's, it's two people having two different energies that creates attraction. It's like magnetic poles. If you have two that are alike, they can repel. And if if they're different, then they attract. And that sort of tension or difference is what creates some vitality in a sexual attraction. And again, it's not about two different genders, but it's about having some play between those two different energies. And so learning about what those energies are, how they show up, what might block them, and what it's like to develop the one you're less comfortable in or spend less time in is important work to do. And these concepts show up in my sex therapy practice, although people aren't generally using this language, you know, about masculine or feminine energy, but they are talking about trouble shifting gears from work, which would be maybe shifting from masculine energy into feminine energy, which is more receptive and fluid. Um, Or they're talking about struggles with attraction with their partner. And maybe it's because, you know, they aren't polarized in this or both in sort of the same place, whether that's masculine or feminine. And again, I'm not talking about gender. It doesn't matter if you're two men or two women. It's about what energy are you playing with. So I have this amazing guest to talk to to us today about this. Her name is Jenny Dawn, and she's really a gifted and experienced shamanic practitioner, an energetic healer, and a life coach, you know, who empowers her clients to reconnect with their inner wisdom and live authentically. So Jenny uses a variety of indigenous and modern healing modalities which focus on removing the energetic and mental barriers that prevent individuals from living in their full potential. She serves a wide variety of clients, including those seeking emotional support during life changes and recovery from physical, psychological, or emotional trauma, and also those who desire to live more wholeheartedly and abundantly. She sees the beauty and light in everyone, certainly, and she certainly shines her own beauty and light with everybody she deals with. She's compassionate, loving, understanding, and always fully present with clients. And after working with her, people often say they feel more alive, joyful, grounded, and inspired to live from the truth of their being. It is just a delight to have Johnny Don with me here today. Hey, Jenny, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited as we dive into this topic. I am too. And I, you know, the listeners don't know this. So we had to reschedule the conversation. So, so I've been eagerly awaiting this since before Christmas. So, so to start off, how about a basic definition or description about masculine and feminine energy and what's different between the two? Yeah, I think that's a great place to start. I think, you know, as we dive into this, there's a lot of misunderstanding between feminine energy and masculine energy. Because I want to be very clear, we are not talking about sexual gender or orientation. These are energies that both of us, male and female, hold inside. And 
they they come out in different ways and different shapes. And so you can see what they look like. The feminine energy, I want you to think about it as it's very receptive. It's feeling and sensing. It's an inward motion. It's intuitive. It also, I think when you think about nature is a great example of feminine energy. Nature is always in motion. Hmm. So it's always moving. It's always changing. Um, a way of thinking about feminine energy is it moves in curves, you know, like it's okay. it in motion. And then we come to this masculine energy and it's a projective energy. It's an active energy. It's a giving energy. It's expansive. It's outward. It's very directional. How the feminine energy moves as it's moving in curves and it's always in motion. The masculine energy is very directional. It's from point A to point B. Ah, uh, okay. But actually, this is a great just picture in the head to be able to see what I'm talking about. I love how David Dida uses this analogy as the masculine energy is the flagpole and the feminine energy is the flag that whips around. Huh. Okay. So it's, I think it's a good picture of seeing the different types of energy. Yeah. Yeah. And how they go together, <laughs> complement each other, you know, they go together. Exactly. One cannot work without the other. And it's interesting, even as you're describing this, I'm having to fight the impulse to associate it with men and women, right? Like, oh, women are this and men are that. You know, it's, it's such a strong impulse in my brain to do that instead of realizing, no, these are two different kinds of energies that all people have access to. Maybe they don't demonstrate them or something, but you know, you're not talking about men and women. No, no. We're talking about an energy and both men and women have masculine and feminine energy. Now they have one more developed and I'm going to say mostly masculine will be more developed in both female and male. Because we live and for as long as I can remember, have kind of grown up in a, in a masculine culture. Okay. Um, when you look at how our world operates, it's very, from point A to point D, it's very goal-oriented. It's very focused. It's very directional. Like this, especially if you're, we've been brought up in any of the corporate world, this yeah. is all masculine energy. So most women or most Females have, we know what our masculine energy is. We show up in it every day at work. Huh. Okay. Okay. Right. And so, yes, there is this aspect of, wait, wait, this isn't a male female thing. This is what is developed within me and how do I develop the other as well? Okay. And it does make me wonder if, I don't know if you have the answer to this, but certainly Western culture is quite masculine. Like that makes a lot of sense to me. Masculine energy based. But I'm wondering, are there, I'm imagining there are other cultures, other places in the world that maybe really tend toward the feminine energy expression. You know, I'm, I'm sure there are as in culture, I don't know, like nothing comes to mind, but as places, New York is very masculine. Mm -hmm. Hawaii is very feminine. Ah, <laughs> just the vibe, right? The city vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Feel it. Huh. And so we're typically when we are drawn to vacation, we are drawn to more feminine places because we are always working in the masculine. Yeah, yeah. So we want that more relaxed, that more island feel, that more go with the flow, that more succulent flow of energy when we go on vacation. That's okay. kind of relax and put down that masculine of going, oh, I got to go here and I got to go there and I got to go do this. And it's like, oh, no, I'm just going to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right. So how, I mean, it seems obvious to me this is going to apply to sex, <laughs> right? But, but how does this knowledge apply to sex and maybe would help listeners, couples, you know, improve their sex life, basically? Yeah, I think it... It shows up a lot, especially when we think about masculine, feminine energy. We, we want to remember, yes, we both carry both, but what are we in? Because this is where this opposite attracts. This is where 
opposite energies attract. And so if you're looking at these at magnets, right, if these are energetic magnets, if we have two energetic magnets that are showing up in their masculine energy, we tend to kind of bump into one another a little bit and we yeah. like to be confrontational and we tend to want to combat and fight. Well, if this is a, if this is in a partnership, that's going to be really hard then to kind of stir that sexual energy when we have this combative energy at play. Mm. So it's an aspect of how do we hold awareness about what energy we are in? So women, when stressed, will typically flip to their masculine energy. Mm. It's just because it, now it becomes very singular focus. And so if I've been working all day and I've been directing and leading a team and I've got a schedule and I've got this appointment and this appointment and I'm very much in that directional energy and I come home and I meet my partner who may also be in his masculine energy there's going to be no attraction ah uh, yeah there's going to be no attraction there so one has to flip into the feminine and it starts with holding awareness about our energy and where we're at, where we're sourcing ourselves from. Right, right. So not talking about male or female, but if that partner comes in and say it is, say we are in a heterosexual relationship, there is a male and a female, and the female desires male orientation and the male desires female orientation. Right. If she comes home and she is in her masculine energy, that's going to be very combative. They're going to bump into each other. It's not going to, they're not going to flow. There's not going to be an attraction. So one, she needs to hold awareness around that. So how can she flip it and bring it back into her feminine? Right. Or two, he needs to hold awareness around that. And how can he help her? flip it so she can step back in to her feminine energy. Yeah. And I suppose, I mean, right. Wouldn't there be an option where he would flip into a more feminine energy? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. I mean, either, either person could do either that. Or. Either yeah. or. And so they just, because we flip between both of them. Yeah. And knowing what one that is. Yeah. So I, I, I'm also yeah. imagining that even within a sexual encounter, once you get that flow going, you might flip poles, <laughs> you know, Exactly. Uh, give and take. We probably talk a lot about this when it actually comes down to, then to the act of sex and in the bedroom, because there are role reversals and shifts. And at one person, one person's guiding and the other person's receiving. And the, now it's going to flip where the other person might be giving and the other person's receiving. This is very masculine, feminine energy. Right, right, right. But a whole different language or framework for this. It's helpful to understand it that way. Exactly. You know, and another, I had this other image of s some of the stuff I hear from clients. And again, they don't have this construct. We haven't talked about it, right? But sometimes, in, in this case, this heterosexual couple, the woman comes home from work. She's in her masculine. They both are. I, I feel like a lot of women, they come in and they complain that their mm -hmm. husband doesn't, I mean, they don't use this language, flip them into their feminine, as if yeah. the responsibility belongs with their partner to somehow make them relax and you know, and be receptive. Yeah. And it's, it's not our partner's responsibility. I, I solely believe that it's ours. Our partners can be of assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we are a team as well. And one way that that is talked about is, you know, so if we're in the heterosexual relationship, she's now in her masculine energy and he becomes aware of that have the example of he actually increases his masculine mm. and they, he may come into the kitchen. He may pick her up, swirl her around and just say, baby, let it go. You're home now. Mm -hmm. Right. Where it's just, it's almost a playful energy where she can switch gears. Yeah. Yeah. And like, Oh, Oh, hi, honey. <laughs> right. 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 But if he flips to his feminine and now she's wanting 
to feel his masculine. Mm. That doesn't like couples, I'm sure talk about this all the time too. He yes. Doesn't. Yes. So when we're talking about a woman, a female who desires masculine energy, she wants him to raise in his masculine. Yeah. Yeah. That's her core essence. Right. right. So this plays out in same sex relationships as one, because one is carrying the masculine and one is carrying the feminine Mm -hmm. and one dominant between two women or two men. And so they have the same energy at play. It's just who's playing that role when. Yeah. And I suppose which one is, which energy is each person more drawn Mm -hmm. to, you know, especially to enter a sexual encounter. Yes, probably I, have a preference. I see, I see this with my my friends. I see this with clients that when they are in a homosexual relationship, gay or lesbian, there is there is always one playing the more masculine and one playing the more feminine role because that's what's creating the attraction. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm I'm sort of mulling that over. Like I'm not sure. I I don't know if I want to completely endorse a statement in terms of in life, you know, but sexually in terms of how people want to interact and their yeah. energy is there have a sexual attraction and enter a sexual encounter. Yes. You can completely yes. see how you need somebody sort of in each role. Yes. And, and again, and, it can flip, it can go back and forth. There's like a flow between this stuff, but, but that yeah. that's where the, you know, the magic happens. They flip. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Without this awareness I mean, I'm just thinking again of of these people who are maybe complaining that their partner doesn't make them feel feminine, <laughs> although they may not use that language, you know, without the awareness that that they might be attached to their masculine, that they just came home, you know, that they have a role in yes. making that shift. Yes. And I think that's where awareness comes in. And I think that's always a discovery of why am I giving that responsibility to another? Mm hmm. Because it's it's empowering when we step back into claiming our own our own energy and our own world. So that's an aspect of that. Because if I'm always giving that over to my partner, that's actually the wounded feminine, to be honest, because that's the victimhood. That's the oh. powerlessness, that's the weakness. And so we're we're actually stepping into an aspect of the wounded feminine. Okay, and that's a whole other uh, ball of wax, huh? Yeah. yeah and it, we don't want to go deep into that, but that's what that is because there's an aspect of giving away my power versus wow. me holding that awareness. And maybe I need to go for a walk. Maybe I need to take a bath. Maybe I need to sit down and maybe my husband or wife gives me a foot massage so I can let go of my day. But I ask for that mm-hmm. so that I can switch those gears. And, okay. and, and and settle back in if my feminine energy is, say, my natural expression, because I am a female who is attracted to male energy, yeah. then my natural expression in my relationship will be a feminine essence. Okay. Is there anything, I mean, this idea of the wounded feminine, and I assume there's a wounded masculine. There um, is. Can you give a little mini course <laughs> on what those involve? Like, I don't know if there's more than just victim role that's wounded feminine, but what ki- what kinds of wounds show up? So it, they're energies. That's how kind of the dynamic plays out. So a wounded feminist is manipulation. It's a neediness. It's a code. It can be a codependency. Mm. It can be a powerlessness. Okay. It's definitely playing a victim, like, well, if he would help me switch, right? That's a, I'm handing over my power. Right, right. Right. So it's like, wait a minute. And the wounded masculine, we all know what this looks like. It's the it's a, the abuse of power. It's the yeah. dominance, it's the aggression, it's the control, it's it's the violence. Yeah. So what's being called in the social media right now or the news is toxic mas- masculinity. Yeah, and they're talking about the wounded masculine. They're not yeah. talking about the divine masculine. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I wish that, of course, our media would figure that out, but we're not there yet, so that's yeah. okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's why we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the interesting piece, though, so now when we come to sex, whether male or female, whether 
female, female, whether male, male, we still have two energies at play. And I, what comes to mind when I think about the feminine masculine energy is we have a dance between trust and surrender. Mm. And I can speak as me because that's the body I hold. I am a female with feminine essence. Yes, I have masculine energy, of course, Mm -hmm. and I work in that all day in my work. But in my relationship, in my when coming together with a sexual partner, in order for me to fully surrender, to open, to fully receive my partner, I have to trust him. Yeah. Now that gets, because this is an energy thing, this is also, it plays out energetically. So I I have to know that, it's hard to explain. I have to know that he, he can hold me in whatever comes up because right the feminine is always moving. Mm. So can he hold whatever comes up? And I have to trust that he also won't get lost in his own feeling or sensation Hmm. that we kind of hold each other through this. So it's, it's this little dance. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an intricate one, as you know. Right. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, gosh, the flag can't really fly around without the flagpole. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And another analogy that is often described as feminine and masculine energy is the feminine energy is the ocean crashing and the masculine energy is the shore on which she crashes upon. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. So regardless, male or female, whoever is fully surrendering into that feminine we want to know that the masculine can hold what's coming. Right. Yeah. Which is another thing that comes up in therapy. And again, not usually with this kind of language, but where one partner who maybe is would hold the masculine energy, male or female, mm-hmm. doesn't have that, I want to say strength. I'm not quite sure of the language to use, but you know, doesn't step in and own that. Like you said, turn up their masculine, right? Yep. Where they have not been raised or something with with the ability to do that yeah right like I, I don't know if it scares them or if they're afraid of you know maybe they've been raised sometimes people tell me they've been raised all by feminists and they're so afraid of their masculine energy I think it's probably a variety of reasons but there's a variety of reasons I also think our definition of the masculine energy and how we've been raised and how it's played out in our culture is more of the wounded masculine and not the divine. So why would a masculine want to embrace more of what they're saying is already getting them in trouble? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's the piece. Like this is a, this, I think this is a topic and a place that we are just starting to learn to understand and, and really go, what is the true meaning of the divine masculine? Yeah. Because the divine masculine is not, it's not power over, it's power with, hmm. right? And we have a culture that is power over. Yeah, yeah. So I can understand that in this situation, like that that person that is, doesn't, I don't want to become more of that. <laughs> right, right. You have misdefinitions on it. Right. So, so, yeah, first they need the awareness that there is a divine masculine and they have some concept of what they're striving for. And then I guess they need the support to to step into that, discover that for themselves. Yeah. And to figure out how, what is that within them yeah. and how does that come out and yeah. how does that now hold the feminine. just taking a quick break in the show, but I'll be back with the rest of the episode in just a minute. If you're enjoying the podcast and you want to be part of making sure it continues in the future, I want to invite you to be a patron. With a small monthly pledge, you can support the costs of putting the show together. With as little as $2 a month, you will get advanced access to every episode. For a little bit more, you can get a chapter of my upcoming book. And for $10 a month, You get all that, plus an invitation to an online Q&A chat with me once a quarter. 
To learn more, go to patreon.com, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N slash Better Sex Podcast, or you can follow the link in the show notes. All right. Well, so that certainly leads me to my next question, which is how do people get in touch with these energies? How do they develop maybe the one that they're less developed in or familiar with? Or- yeah. And I think, I think most of us, and I'm going to talk as female, even as a female, I had to learn what feminine energy was. And it's something that I've had to be with and study for the last 15 years. And I'm still learning what feminine energy is and how to be in feminine energy and what that looks like in that divine feminine, because we also have a very wounded feminine that plays out. Right, right. So it's one, I think it's educating yourself and listening to a podcast like this, doing a couple Google searches on what <laughs> Killing feminine energy. Right, right. Where can you find examples of what that looks like? I love that. Now, this is this is a great exercise that I give many of my clients, and many of my clients, I have probably ninety percent female based clientele, and I will give them this exercise, and they will be majority are probably heterosexual in relationship with a male partner, and. <laughs> The exercise I give them is as they are in the passenger seat and their husband is driving or their partner is driving, they cannot tell them where to go. (laughs) They cannot give directions. They they get to be in the flow. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because, and I've had many of my, oh my God, that's going to kick my butt. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. (laughs) going to be good for you. So you get to be in the passenger seat. You get wow. to flow. You don't get to direct right now. Yeah. No feedback, because, right? No help. <laughs> yeah. The direction telling them where to go or why didn't you go this way or turn left. That's a masculine energy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I'm helping them start practicing kind of letting go of that and what that feels like. The other thing I love, and this was a great exercise that I learned in a workshop years back, but to actually somewhere in your house where you can walk a hallway, a large room, I want you to close your eyes and you are going to embody your masculine energy, male or female. It doesn't matter what orientation you are. I want you to embody your masculine energy. You're getting ready to go into a corporate meeting And you are leading it. So you're about to step into the boardroom. I want you to walk across the room. And I want you to feel how you walk. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine that. You can imagine it. You can imagine the energy. Mm -hmm. And how now you're going to like energetically shake that off. You're going to close your eyes again. Male or female. Doesn't matter. I want you on a nice, warm, sunny day, barefoot. If female, I want you to put on your most just beautiful spaghetti string dress, nice and flowy. If male, you're going to have on some linen shorts, maybe a loose flowing um, tank top. And you're going to walk along the beach. Mm. Where are you walking from? You feel that change? Yeah. Yeah. Typically when we're in our masculine, we're leading with our shoulders and we're actually walking from our shoulders. Huh? And you, if you get off this call and do that, you'll feel that. It's right. Good. Right. There's your back and you're kind of leading with that chest. When we walk from our feminine, we'll be walking from our hips. Mm-hmm. It's more relaxed. And so this is a great exercise especially for a female who wants to practice being in her feminine essence to do before going into the grocery store or going out on a walk. So she can start feeling what that energy feels like. I remember years ago when I was working with a coach, 
and I was learning how to be in my feminine, one of the um, homework assignments she gave me is that she said, you cannot go to a date in jeans and your boots. (laughs) And I was like, oh, (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to have to go shopping. (laughs) Yeah, like, oh, wait, she's like, because I guarantee you, you're showing up in your masculine on a date. Wow. And so bringing an awareness to like, oh, you're right. Like, cause I feel very secure and I feel very in control and I know I've got this like, oh, what does it feel like to allow that softer, that more receptive, that flow to come forward? And that doesn't mean submissive. I want to be very clear. That is not a submissive energy. Um, So it's, it's, it's like playing with that. And what does that feel like? Yeah. Even someone who's very masculine. I think this is good and say they go drive to work the same way every day. If you want to be more in your feminine, practice going different ways. Hmm. And Not just so goal oriented, right? Yeah. Like yeah. let that go. So it's ways of seeing how these energies play out. Like, oh yeah, like what happens if I go a different way? How does that feel? Yeah. Or cooking, cooking, but not following the directions. Hmm. Like, watch what comes up in you when you let that go and you just go, okay, I'm going to cook tonight, but I'm just going to cook by instinct or what's in the fridge and I'm just going to see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Right, because the masculine is point A to point B. It's very directional. It's very singular focused. It's going to go in one direction. The feminine is going to flow. There is no destination. (laughs) You know, it's interesting in in this, you know, my brain is spinning now and I'm thinking about how much of the time I'm trying to get couples to let go of the goal, like of orgasm and sex, right? Because so many people, when they come in, they've got this, we start here, we do this, we go there and we get to orgasm. Like this is the road. We're having trouble with that. That's why we're coming into sex therapy, but they have such a directional masculine approach to the encounter And of course, without having used any of this language or have this awareness, you know, it's been, whoa, it's about the journey. Let's get rid of that goal. I mean, it's nice to go there, but it's not the destination. And let's make this more unexpected and slow, you know, all this. You're you're certainly it's like trying to infuse it with feminine energy. Yeah, you're 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 bringing in the feminine and following the pleasure and who Mm -hmm. knows pleasure goes and there's no destination there's no end result when the pleasure ends the experience is complete yeah but that yeah. doesn't mean orgasm as right. you know right yeah. right sex is very the way we have it set up right now and the way we've been taught and most of us haven't been taught we've stumbled is masculine orientation yeah yeah and it doesn't really work <laughs> <laughs> yes, certainly people get into trouble. I was wondering if you have, do you have other exercises or ideas for the partner? Let's say it's a man, but the partner that's having trouble coming into their their divine masculine, you know, their partner comes home strong and masculine from work and, and how they could get better at stepping up their masculine so the other person can flip into feminine. Yeah, Um it's, it's one, it's learning what those character traits are. So it's an inner strength. It's, it's a confidence. It's, it's a protection. It's a support. It's a stability, right? So it's like, how do I embrace that more? And, and it has a lot to do with that confidence because if my partner is also in their masculine and I'm not confident in my masculine, I'm going to either flip neutral or to my feminine. And there is a whole thing called neutral energy. And oftentimes men, I will say men probably flip more to their neutral than they do their feminine. Hmm. And it's, and so it's learning how to more embody their essence and to, and to feel and to strengthen how they are in it because yeah. it is kind of so hard when we're talking about energy because it's something that comes from the inside out. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, so it's that piece of being confident that you, you can say, babe, go sit down. I got this, mm-hmm. or, you know, to help somebody switch. But so often we have become 
neutral because we don't know what the right approach is now. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's learning, like, what is that like? What, what is a flagpole? And when, when that, when that flag starts to whip, does the flagpole bend? Right, right. No, it stands solid. Does it collapse? No. And so understanding like, wait, this isn't a place that I back away. This is actually a place that I lean in. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be different how every masculine does that. But it's like, how do I lean in? How do I, how do I stand taller in this? So that she or he can settle or surrender if that's the role that this partner typically plays in the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. I can see why working with you in person or somebody like you makes such a difference. Like, you know, it's it's sort of all in our head, right. To Mm -hmm. talk about it or to read about it, but it it seems so experiential. So I can see the value in working with a coach or or a healer. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's important to understand like, because it is like, kind of getting it moving and going, how's that look in your life? And then we can look at that individual's life and you look at what's showing up in their life and I can go, oh, okay, that's your masculine. And they're Mm -hmm. like, because I know many women that will get up, that will put themselves together for a date and do the hair, do the makeup, get dressed, go out. But they've done it all in their masculine energy and they show up and then there's no attraction. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, honey, you're in your masculine. <laughs> and they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, all of that. I like even, even with beautiful. hair and makeup, yeah. Pretty. Like, you're beautiful. That has nothing to do with it. But what energy did you walk in with? Yeah, yeah. You walked in with your control. You walked in with we're going from here to there. You like, they're, it's like, oh, you're in your masculine energy. And men, a male or a female, but whoever, if they're embodying their masculine essence and they're attracted to a feminine essence doesn't matter gender right but if i'm a male essence i'm attracted to a feminine essence i want to be able to feel that receptivity i want to be able to feel that nurture i want to feel that that oh i can actually sink in and surrender into you oh this is funny it's it's making a lot of things make sense in my life actually (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it, it's interesting that you say that because it's it can be very complicated for me to explain because we're talking about essence and energy right, right. And, conversation and and trying to get it all correct <laughs> yeah yeah so how how can people learn more about you specifically and and more about the topic I mean I can certainly share any links in the show notes for anything you mentioned or anything you want to send me but yeah I think um, they can definitely go to my website and that's just um, www.lightbydawn um, or jennydawn.com. Both will get you there. Um, however, I'm not going to have the masculine feminine energy um, up there. I did do a talk. Oh, it's been over a year ago or so. So they can, I can send you that Facebook live. I did a talk on the feminine masculine energy. Okay. Um, and then I can also, I think there's some great books um, that you could start to read, or even there are some great just 15 minute, half an hour YouTube clips that yeah. at least are giving you the framework. And I can always send over some of those to you so that when you have clients ask, you can say, hey, watch this. Yeah, no, that'd be great. If you would send the links, I'll stick them all in the show notes. So then yep. they're available to everybody. Yep, I think that's great because I think it's just about starting to inform yourself that there is an energy and how does this energy look? Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Thank you so much for sharing all this. It's it's thought provoking and really helpful. Thank you, Jessa, for having me. It was such a pleasure to to talk about it and to kind of pick it apart sometimes. Yeah, great. Thank you. You are so welcome, my dear. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you found that this episode resonated with you, I would love to hear from you. 
You can leave me a comment on the episode page. You'll find a link in the episode description. And if you've got time, again, please visit iTunes, subscribe to the podcast, and consider rating and reviewing the show. That's what helps other people find us. Thanks so much. See you next time. Our theme music has been composed, recorded, and provided by Rick Ruskin, courtesy of Lion Dog Music. <laughs>